Hi, you guys. This is Good Deeds, and I'm Dr. Renee Sunday. I love it. I love it. I love it. I know you're having a wonderful, fabulous, marvelous day because you can breathe in and you can breathe out. I know it's a lot of stuff in between there that we don't understand, the trials and tribulations, the things that we just don't know what's really going on. But the thing is, we do have to go through those things because one is life, and we actually, I know it's hard to say sometimes, but your pain actually leads you to your purpose. Yes, yes. <laughs> but we want to talk about this real quickly is focus. We got to focus. Um I really, truly had an out-of-body experience. Um, I had an opportunity to speak in a high school. We got to truly, truly pray for our students, our children, Lord, and the teachers. Uh, I witnessed something firsthand because it's been a little bit since I actually uh, spoke at a career day. And, and the, the, concern, the issue is, uh, now I ain't going to say the issue, but we did it different. Usually, you know, you go to the auditorium, you speak to everybody, so you really can't truly see everybody's emotions. But this particular school, we went around to the different classes. And, you know, we got to intercede. We got to be that example. We got to focus and do what's in our purpose because our kids need to see an example. A couple of people were saying, Dr. Sonny, you have so much energy. How do you have that? And I said, one, I'm glad to be alive. I'm glad to be in this situation I'm in that I can impart and help other people. But guess what? All of us need to do that. I'm so emotional about it. Excuse me. Because our kids look sad. Some of the kids were looking sad. And a child, I know when I was growing up, I didn't have a kid in the world. I really didn't, you know. Maybe that was my naiveness or whatever you want to say. And I know every, I grew up in poverty. So I'm not saying I have a silver spoon because I didn't and I don't have that. But we have to be in our purpose. It actually made me, I mean, literally, I made sure everybody that I could, I could shake their hand, love them, tell them that I believe in them. And one young lady told me, She's never had nobody say that. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She never had somebody say that she believes in her. You know, but anyway, this is what I want you to know. Always, always believe in yourself, trust the process, and walk it out. You know, I'm sorry. I got to get myself together, but it, it just really touched me down in my core that our kids, they really need us. So we got to stop all this foolishness, and I'm going to just say it like that, and we need to walk in our purpose. Today we have an awesome, awesome young lady that actually can tell us a story that she can actually know she thank God for where she is right now in her life. Um, I, just looking at the things that she has been through, the stories that she can tell, the in, in, in partment, you know, she can, imp, I mean, I just can't even put the right word on it. She can imp, really inspire you, motivate you, but she can keep it 100 like the kids said today. She will tell you the things that she's been through, that you won't go through those, and the thing to realize is that you can do better. You know, life has ups and downs, but we got to, we gotta. what I always say, don't stop, get it, get it, right? But we don't want to delay. We want the uh, fabulous, the marvelous, the life-changing young lady. This is author, founder, you know, the founder of Front Under a Bridge, Incorporated, Blossom Rogers. Welcome, welcome to Good Deeds. Hey, Sweetum, how you doing, girl? <laughs> I said, love it. I know she's going to rock it, okay? <laughs> Ooh, that, you know, boy. girl, you know what? You just got to do it, make it do what it do. You, you know what I'm saying? Life is just too, too, too short. And I was listening to you when you were saying uh, about how sad them children was looking, and it brought back memories to me, how sad I must have been looking when I was going through my issue. But you said a mouthful that we got to get off these porches, talk about we fitting to do something. What? How do you spell that word, fitting to? Get up off these porches and make ourselves available 
to these to these young people because you know what we gonna be accountable when we stand before the Lord. You could have did something. We sometimes we think it's um we gotta give money, got no just a hug or a smile. You don't know what somebody might be going through, and you could be stopping them from committing suicide. So I, first of all, I want to thank God and you for allowing me to come and share my testimony with y'all, girl. I tell you, you came out there wide open, wide open. <laughs> That's me. I, I some that ooh, just a really because I knew I grew up in poverty, so I, I'm not telling you some that I I heard about. I, I have lived it, so I know. But we want to. I'm sorry, Blossom, that I went there. But glory <laughs> be to God. Tell us. Uh, I know I only tipped the iceberg of the things that you've been through, the story, the testimony, the lives you are changing through your testimony. So tell us a little bit more about yourself. And, you know, the things well, that you are helping so many people to do. Well, like I say, uh, like I like to, uh, always like to say, I am not the one to gossip, but God is good. Um, God blessed me. I, I was uh, on crack cocaine for 19 hard years. Now, I want you to know that I just turned one years young in January, so, but 19 of them years, I was out there smoking crack cocaine. And the reason that I was smoking crack was because I was one of them children that was sad and was going through stuff and was going through molestation. You know, back in them days, we couldn't talk about that kind of stuff. That was a no-no. So God blessed me uh, mm-hmm. to be the author, actually, of uh, three books. But my babies are from two books, from Under a Bridge, book one and book two. Because t- 12 years ago, I lived under a bridge in the back seat of my car due to my drug addiction. Now, if you look at my pictures on Facebook, my dreads represent my clean time. I haven't had no crack, no alcohol, or combed my hair in 12 years. Now, ladies, I do cover up the wisdom. That's that little little gray. You know, that's wisdom. I don't like everybody to know how smart I am, but I, that's the only thing I've done to it. But that's what my dreads represent. Um, book one tells you what led me to crack being molested. Um, I think the... The earliest time I remember was at the age of five. I remember um, one of my grandmother's uh, rumors, because she used to written rooms to guys, asked me did I want to kiss his worm. Um, and, and I want somebody to hear me very well. If you went through what I went through, I want you to know it was not your fault, because they were the grown-ups and we were the children. You know, our molesters want to keep us bound. They want to keep us oppressed. But I want you to know that when Jesus rose up on that third day, he freed us. And all you got to do, you got to ask God. God just to forgive you because we beat ourselves up because we're saying it's our fault, but it wasn't our fault. I want you to hear me very well. It was not your fault. And if God cleaned me up, he can clean you up. He can free you too, but you got to want to be free. So in book one, it tells you how I went through the molestation. Um, and I want you to know that God had to teach me how to forgive my stepfather because you just don't wake up saying I want to molest a child. Something had to occur in order for him to uh, afflict me with that. And it took God to make me realize that. And it took God to help me to forgive him because we cannot forgive on our own. We try, but the next thing they make, when they make us mad, we, we think about that old thing they did before. So like I said, God blessed me to be able to forgive. And when we're forgiving, it's not for the other person, it's for us. So um, also in book one, it tells you how I got pregnant at an early age, um, how I ended up, I was going with the guy that was smoking crack, and so he started beating me and taking my money, and I said, well, I can't uh, beat him, I might as well join him. And I made him teach me how to smoke crack because my childhood had been snatched from me, and I always wanted to fit in. And I want you all to know, we let us stop trying to fit into these cliques. If God don't, if we don't. It is because of reason, because when God rises up, he don't want nobody to say, if it wasn't for me, they wouldn't have this. God don't want us in all these clicks and clacks, making all them kind of noises. Um, he sets us apart for a reason. So like I said, I got with the guy, started smoking crack. Also in the book, you find out how I was an unfit mother. Um, I tell everybody I maybe didn't sexually or physically abuse him, but mentally I put my boys through a lot. But God, uh, he gave me a new relationship with my kids. Also in the book, um, it just tells you how I got – I got on crack so bad, and it didn't take that long, you know. Um, um, then with book two, that's where all the juicy stuff at. So you have to go and get book number two. Um, book two also tells you about my prison number, 589931. 
Um, it also tells you um, about how God delivered me from homosexual spirit because by me being molested and, and beat by me, and I thought going with a woman was better. Um, also, it uh, tells you how I had a man to leave me for another man, how I just, I was a crackhead, a crackhead. But one thing I heard you say, Miss um, Sunday, that your pain will push you to your purpose, and that's what uh, it has done. And I didn't understand back then, but I understand now. We have to go through all this because we cannot be able to help nobody if we haven't been through it ourselves. So God blessed me. Um, when uh, I was sitting in the house in Daytona Beach, Florida, because that's where all my addiction happened, um, I uh, was smoking crack, and my habit had got to be five to $600 a day. Um, and I just I did everything out there for it but slept with an animal. And if the dope boy would have said sleep with Lassie, I would have. That's how bad I was on crack. Because like I said, you had, I had to get it like Drek, as we said, back home. Um, and I was sitting in the crack house in Daytona, and I was just uh, I was so sick and tired of being sick and tired. And you cannot get clean and sober unless you want it for yourself because I try to do it for children, mama, uh, uh, family, church, but until Blossom wanted it for herself. So that's why I, I guard my sobriety. So because if I go back to getting high, I know I'm not going to make it back. Well, uh, I was sitting in the da- house in Daytona Beach, and um, I had a. And if you look on my Facebook, I still have. Uh, you see a picture of a shirt, shoes, and purse. Them are the items that I had on that night when God brought me out of that crack house. But I had a piece of paper and a pencil in that purse. And I was writing God a letter, but I still was smoking crack. And I was writing, and I was still smoking crack, and I was writing. But then God bless me, I took that last hit, and I put that purse on my shoulder, and it's been 12 years since I had a hit of crack. Um, God bless me, I checked myself into the hospital, and they uh, sent me to a treatment facility down in Miami. And you have to change your people, places, and things if you want to do better. Um, now I know some people that can that has gotten clean in our hometown and they stayed there. But what might be good for one might not be good for the other. I know it wasn't good for me. So God bless me. I didn't go back around the people, places, things. I love everybody, but like I said, I want to live because when like, you know back in the days I used to look in the mirror at a something. Today, God bless me, I can look in the mirror at somebody. Um, I, I was a, I, I was a. I'm telling you, I was a hot mess. I was about 120. 20 to 125 pounds soaking wet. I looked like tails from the crib and smelled like hot buttermilk because I didn't take baths. Water didn't like me, and I didn't like water. And I just tell people, when you go through something, <laughs> girl, you can laugh because let me tell you one thing. That third book is called And They Laugh. And I'm going to tell you one thing. Always know what kind of laughter you're dealing with. Are they laughing with you? Or at you, you know, um, God. Well, God bless me to be on platforms. I, I was always the class clown coming up. I felt like if I made people laugh, um, I was making people laugh because I was in so much of pain. And if I made you laugh, that means that you liked me, you know. And I had people laughing. I was laughing at myself with the people. So make sure you know what kind of laughter you're dealing with. Are they laughing with you or at you? And I'm telling you, I did some crazy things when I was out there, girl. What I'll tell you, when I used to come, when they used to know that. Somebody would say, here come Blossom, girl. They would pick their whole chair, their whole house up and move it because I was a mean drunk. I was a mean crackhead mm. because I was trying to defend and prove that these things happened to me. But one thing God has taught me, as long as I know and God know and he know, that's all that matters. When you're trying to sit and defend and prove yourself to everybody, you've been a ran creep. You've been to pluck all your hair out your head. You've been around here picking flowers nobody can't see and scratching the ears. Ain't nothing itching, but you think it is. You've been around yourself ragged, trying to people please and prove stuff to people. As long as we please God and our ways pleasing him, he won't hold nothing good from us. And I want somebody to hit me very well. I'm not saying I don't go through life issues. Let's stop saying problems. Let's say issues because they're issues of life. But as long as I don't pick up no crack cocaine or no alcohol, I'm doing just fine. Once God bless me to get clean and sober in Miami, um, I went back to school, got my high school diploma. And, y'all, I'm telling you, I was dumb as a donor in school. Them people just passed me through because they didn't want to 
keep me in the classroom. But God bless, he'll give you wisdom if you ask for it. So God bless me, I was able to go back to school, got my high school diploma. Then he put me in college. I said, wait a minute, I'm going to college too? He said, yeah. <laughs> so God bless me. God bless me. I went to college and uh, became a national certified, I mean a national certified medical assistant, you know, and I was like, Lord, this ain't nobody but you. He say he'll make the foolish things. He'll do something with them. And I did some foolish things out there. Then God blessed me. Um, I got married again, and uh, we moved here to Alabama. Now, this is my, uh, we've been divorced now in June. Lie make four years, and we got a divorce due to love. And people say love. I say, yeah, because he loved talking to other women, brought another woman in my house. So that season was over there, but I didn't go back and get high. I get high if a bird got if a bird got killed. Oh, let's go get high. I didn't just got high just because. But I knew when I was going through this um, issue with the divorce, I cried out to the Lord because I always I don't care what city I went to or what town I went to, I always ended up in a crack house. And I used to say, well, how did I end up here? And sometimes, y'all, we could be our worst enemy. I was I was my worst enemy. Mm-hmm. And if you don't believe in yourself, nobody else is not going to do it. I'm not going to say it's easy. I'm not going to say that I haven't cried sometimes. I'm not going to say I don't want to, I haven't wanted to give up. But long as I continue to keep that burning desire, I know that God has a calling and a, a, a purpose for me to do. Um, so I went through now, this has all been going on since I've been clean and sober now. Um, I have been through the divorce, and then last year, went through a foreclosure with the house. And then uh, about eight months ago, I'm walking around the house, had heard a good sermon from TJ's. Girl, I'm walking around here. I'm saying, hold my mute while I praise. I'm pr-. And girl, opened the front door, car gone, within repoed it, but I didn't go get high. I said, but God. So like I said, God will work things out. We just have to be patient. We we just have to just trust him. When we can't trace him, we still got to trust him. You know what I'm saying? And you know, we did that, that saying they're saying that when the teacher is giving a, uh, um, a test, they don't talk. You'd be saying, Lord, what 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 am I supposed to be doing? So like I said, he, he's the God in the valley, and he's the God in, on top of the hill. So um, in the process, God bless me uh, from under a bridge, book one and two has been out for seven years, and then book number three, and they laugh, has been out for a year. Because, like I said, people will laugh with you, and they'll laugh at you. So know the difference. Um, and then God has blessed me where I, uh, my dream, uh, by me not having a place to live, it was a 1993 dynasty that I used to sleep in. And when I didn't have money to uh, get a hotel or was able to find somebody to trick with, I would pull my car up under a bridge and get in the back seat and go to sleep. And I remember hearing the big car, hearing the cars going over that big bridge and, and remember saying, them people up there living, I'm down here dying. I used to cry myself to sleep many times, mm-hmm. but I still would get up and do the same thing, go across town and do the same thing. So I, I was, and then I, I didn't try to commit suicide, but I'm going to tell you how I tried to commit. I made sure there was no bullets in the gun because I was too scared to live and too scared to die, you know. So like I said, I, and I and I, I misused the thing. I know whatever you sow, you shall reap it. I, I don't want nobody to think that it was, oh, all they did blossom so long. No, I did a lot of trifling things like that. So I had to I had to pay for that kind of stuff. So like I said, um. God bless me, do the books and everything. And then God bless me, I never had a safe place to go. And if we don't have a safe place to go, we go back to the people, places, and things. And so God bless me, I went for a habitat and just told them my dreams and pulled my heart out to them and was asking them could they build a house for me for women that want to stay clean and sober. And so God bless me, um, I'm a, a 501 c 3 My organization is called From Under Bridge Safe to the Home for Women. Um, God bless me, when I got my uh, tax exempt, I called and I said, well, I just was checking, checking to see if we heard anything. She said, oh, Blossom, she said, I forgot to call you. She said, but we got a piece of land that we'll never use, and we're just going to give it to you. And I said, now, who who's going to give a, a ex crackhead some land? I, 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 wait a minute. Wait, uh, let me get – go ahead and stop breathing. I said, who, me? She said, yes. She said, now, you're going to have to get a lawyer, <laughs> a lawyer to, to, to turn the deed. So I said, so you give me the land. She said, yes, we are. She said, unfortunately, we can't build the house for you because our homes are for single families. She said, but we're going to just give you the land. I said, Lord, have mercy. So I called one of my partners. I told him what was going down. God bless it. He got in touch with a friend of his, which is a lawyer. The, uh, God touched the lawyer's heart where he get all my paperwork for me for free. Didn't charge me a dime. I said, okay, God, thank you. Then God blessed me. Um, um, 
I went before the um, city council here in um, Tuscaloosa, and I just told them what my desires was and what did I need to do. And God had these people doing everything. They were saying all these big words, and I was like, "Mm mm-hmm, trying to act like I was all educated. I said, yeah, didn't know what they was talking about. But God (laughs) fixed it where um, we'll be able to house six women instead of three women. So when I went before the city council, uh, you know, they was all sitting real high and everything. I was down there, and I was answering the question because I didn't want to act like I ain't had no kind of edema case. You know what I'm saying? I wanted to act like something. Mm-hmm. So I, um, I went up there, and then all of a sudden they started asking me questions, and 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 then they went to they asked if anybody had anything to say, and God this had shut the mouths of everybody. Nobody had nothing to say against having a uh, a rehab house in their neighborhood, and, I, and God give God the glory. Um. The, um so when I started mm. hearing everybody saying, yes, 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 I broke down crying because it was like I heard the Lord saying, yes. You know, being out there on the streets as a woman, you know, I had to fight, uh, you know. And, but one thing I can honestly say that God took care of me the whole time I was out there. Um, I was involved with a guy that was HIV, never told me. We never had safe sex. But I'm sitting here, I don't have AIDS, and I don't have HIV. Unfortunately, he passed away eight years ago due to complications. And I have people saying, Boston, girl, your blood. No, that was the blood of Jesus that covered me. We had to stop claiming that <laughs> it ain't nobody but, but God who covered me. So like I said, then God blessed me. Um, my blueprint um, got a, a young lady who designed it, beautiful three-bedroom, two-baths, kitchen, nook, beautiful uh, house for women, 1,200 square feet. And so she had gave me a set price, and I asked her, could I make payments? And she said, yes, Blossom. So we we met at Barnes & Noble, of all places. And um, she said, Blossom, you told me you are an um, author. I said, yes, ma'am. She said, well, I tell you what, I'm going to the beach. I don't have anything to read. If you give me a signed autograph book, we'll call it even. Girl, by the grace of God, my books are on the shelf here. I ran to the biography department, snatched them books off, and signed it like I was making a new law. <laughs> And that's how God, that's how God blessed her. And then one of my, um, one of my good friends, I love her that she says, um, we were sitting there talking and laughing, and all of a sudden she got quiet. I said, Oh Lord, I must have said something wrong. She said, Boss, I hear the Lord saying to give you a thousand because my building permit was fifteen oh one, and I said, Lord, where am I get fifteen hundred dollars from? So God touched her heart. Mm-hmm. She gave me fifteen hundred dollars. And I said, so, and God got me so spoiled with this assignment. I said, so I got to put the dollar in. And I tell you, Miss Rena, I didn't even have a dollar bill. I had I had four quarters. But when God blessed me to go to the city hall, I I walked in there so proud. I was I had my chest out, my head swinging back. You could, I had a twist going on. And when I walked into the pad, I had $1,500 bills in four quarters. And that's how God blessed me with the building permit. So now... Um, you know, I went before our mayor, and uh, I, I I love my mayor because he believes in me, and uh, he and I thank God he was honest about everything. So he told me some things I need to do, and so he, he put me with the organization. We sat down, we talked. I showed him the blueprints, everything. But told him everything was going on, and he said, "Blossom, if you raise forty thousand, we'll build the whole house for you." So that's where we're at right now, and uh, like I said, wow. uh, it's, it's going. It's going it's gonna to happen. It, it's going to happen. So um, I really want to break ground on June the 4th because that's my anniversary, 13 years clean. But my ways and my God's ways, I know it's going to be built. And then so God bless me. We're um, working with a, a company now that um, is, we're in pre-production right now. They're doing the screenplay. And I, I read the first part, and I was excited, you know, to get ready to make the books into a TV series. Um, I can't talk about it, but I can only say, Empire, get ready, you know. So um, I'm excited. <laughs> and like I said, <laughs> I, mean, <laughs> listen, I ain't no one to gossip, but baby, y'all better get ready. So like I said, I, this is hey, a, well, and, and all this stuff. Hey, I'm an actress as well, though. <laughs> baby, baby, let me tell you one thing. All you got to do is say, boo, I'm ready, okay? You, we'll talk after this, after this show. <laughs> But like I said, God yeah, is good. Yeah, yeah. But you know, oh, you just have to stand still and know who God is. And I'm telling you, listeners, don't take this lightly what I'm saying. I wouldn't care if God gave you the gift of drawing on eyebrow. You'd be the best eyebrow draw because your gifts will make room for you. If you don't never hear nothing else, I say your gifts will make room for you. And when you could be real with yourself, I could be real with Blossom. Then I could be real with anybody else. You know, we have a lot of people talking about, I'm just keeping it real. Okay, 
And then when somebody say something about what you've been through or what you did, don't be talking, don't be judging me. And I tell other people, I, tell, I don't care what you say about me because if I put it on page 23 in the book, I must want somebody to know about it because so many people are going through or have been through what I've been through, you know, with the drugs, with the alcohol, with the molestation, because that was the work of the enemy back then. He was trying to destroy me back then as a child, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, and then with the uh, man leaving you for a man, then with the homosexual stuff, you know what I'm saying? And that spirit is taking over rap, and I want somebody to know we're not born like that. That's a choice of lifestyle. And if you are dealing with that, ask God to help you because you cannot – do deliver yourself. It takes God. And so, like I said, that's blossom from under a bridge. And I want y'all to know he brought me from under a bridge to drive over a bridge to my dream. That's blossom. Girl, I, I'm over here just <laughs> shouting all over the place. You, you know, you're so powerful and, and you so down to earth. And, and uh, when my team told me that you was from the lovely Alabama, I'm actually born and raised in Birmingham. So, not too far from where okay. you are. <laughs> right, right, right. Wow. And you know what? One thing I tell a lot of people, I was a hustler when I was out there on the streets. So the same hustle mentality I had when I was out there on the street is the same hustle mentality I have to have for the Lord. If I wasn't ashamed to knock on them dope boys' doors and ask them, I can't be ashamed to ask, can I come on your show and tell my story? That, that's, I'm not ashamed. You, can I come on your show? Can I come on your show? Because. Somebody, and I love, every time God opens the door for me to tell my story, it's much, it's more and more healing for me. You know what I'm saying? I get so joyed when I can tell my story because I'm able to just keep saying over and over again, I am somebody. You know, we have people tell us we're not this and not that or you such and such. But as long as we know or can hold on to what God says, because God don't make no junk. He don't make no so-called. He called us by name. And so, like I said, I just want to thank God and you and your team for for being obedient. And may God show y'all favor because y'all could have bucked the system and said, no, nah, they ain't coming on here. But y'all didn't. You know, y'all was y'all was in order. Y'all did things right on time, and, and it was persistent. You know what I'm saying? It just wasn't no any kind of thing. It was just done in order. So, like I said, I thank God for y'all. And may God bless y'all for being obedient, for letting me come on here for such a time as this. Oh, Lord. Well, thank you so much. You know, more, 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 more to come to you, my sister. I just, I just love it. I, and let me, I just want to say this, Alabama, watch out. The world, watch out. Hey. The universe, y'all better watch out. <laughs> God, Amen. I receive oh, that. Wow. I receive that. Mm. And if it's anything mm. that I can do mm. for you, I'm telling you, anything, anything, if I can do it, if it's God's will, please ask me. Because like I said, you just don't know. Ms. Renee, when I look at your picture on Facebook, you just you just are elegant. You have an elegant spirit. I'm not saying no high class elegant. I'm just saying that you you mm-hmm. brighten up the room. I see how you stand when you you posing on the pit. And you could tell a lot about people the way they po- uh, their posture is. If, if they if they slumped all over, it's mm-hmm. something going on. You know what I'm saying? But mm-hmm. when I look at you. It's an elegant, like a Diana Ross, you know, or, or, she's Sasha, you know, or Mary J. Bly, because, you know, you got some little hip about it, you know, when you just, you know, <laughs> it's just it's beautiful. <laughs> I'm not listening now. I'm, oh. ain't, there ain't nothing old but my clothes. I'm still an old thug. But like I say, I, I hope so for God bad. now. But I thank you so much. I, God is good. God is good. <laughs> but you know, Blossom, <laughs> tell us how we can uh, get your products and services and how we actually can support you on social media as well. Amen, amen. Well, y'all can go on Facebook, look me up. My name is Blossom Rogers. My email address is B L O S, the number two white, W H I T E, at yahoo.com. My phone number is 305 753 8164. And God bless me. Uh, my team, they just uh, did a beautiful website. It's blossomrogers.weebly, W E E B L Y.com. And like I said, I am not the one to gossip, but Empire, just look out um, uh, from Underbridge uh, TV show will be coming out. And uh, I'm excited about that. I'm just, you know, when I think about God 
blessing with my life or be on screen. You know, that ain't nobody but God. But see, when I was up under that bridge, they laughed oh, yeah. at me. They spit on me. They kicked me. You know, they said I wasn't going to be there but God. but God. So, like I said, y'all believe in yourself mm-hmm. because God does. And believe in your dreams. <laughs> Girl, you, I love it. I love it. I love it. Well, we want to, for one, being in your purpose, but thank you as well for being here with us a good deed. You know, if you need us for anything, please, please don't hesitate to contact us. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much. And I want to thank you, listeners, for tuning in, too. Yes, ma'am. Oh, well, Lord. ladies and gentlemen, oh, my God, powerful, powerful woman of God. Oh, my God, please look her up, follow her on Facebook, and we're going to be looking out for this amazing, amazing series. Oh, my God, I'm just so excited. But, you know, if you want to get any information about us, you know, about advertising, sponsorship, our nonprofit organization, if you have a book you need to publish, uh, if you actually, we have a TV series that we're going to be doing some things in Florida, and we're going to be doing some things in Alabama, and actually, of course, they're here in Atlanta, please contact us at Renee, which is R-E-N-E-E Sunday, S-U-E-N-D-A-Y. Please remember, you do have a reason you were born. You have a reason that you're here right now. You have to do the three things. You got to believe, you got to trust, and you got to walk it out. So say it with me. You got to don't stop. You got to get it, get it. You know, I love you, love you, love you, but God loves you best. This is Good Deeds, and I'm Dr. Renee Sunday. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.